In this video, we will talk about the obstructive sleep apnea. Normally, the air flows smoothly from the nose and mouth into the lungs, but when this normal flow stops, it is called as cessation of breathing or apnea. When this uh, cessation of breathing occurs due to obstruction of the airways during sleep, this is termed as obstructive sleep apnea or OSA. OSA is a condition in which breathing stops involuntarily for brief periods of time during sleep. The normal flow of air is repeatedly stopped throughout the night and the flow of air stops because airway space in the area of throat is too narrow. This interferes with the person's rest and sleep and uh, affects the memory, learning and decision making. The risk factors for the obstructive sleep apnea include obesity because obese patients have increased pharyngeal mass which increases the chances of collapsibility of the pharynx and uh, thus uh, can cause obstructive sleep apnea. Male gender because men are more prone to obstructive sleep apnea due to extra deposition of uh, body fat in the trunk, head and neck and around the airways. Postmenopausal status uh, The higher levels of estrogen and progesterone protect the women prior to the onset of menopause. These hormones maintain the airway muscle tone and keep it from uh, collapsing. But with the menopause, the levels of these hormones drop uh, to the lowest uh, values and the incidence of uh, sleep apnea climbs. Advanced age due to the generalized age related decrease in the size of the upper airway lumen. Structural change like if the patient is having tonsillar hypertrophy, abnormal positioning of one or both jaws, variation in the craniofacial structures uh, and so on. Naturally pharynx is a collapsible tube. When we sleep the uh, tone of the muscles is reduced in the body. And when we inhale, there is a, the generation of negative pressure. This negative uh, pressure can cause collapse of the pharynx and can cause obstructive sleep apnea. Repetitive apneatic episodes lead to the hypoxia and hypercapnia. This can trigger sympathetic nervous system in the patient and can cause uh, increased heart rate, increased stroke volume and other things which can lead to higher prevalence of hypertension and ultimately can increase the risk of uh, myocardial infarction and stroke. The clinical manifestations include frequent loud snoring, breathing cessation for at least 10 seconds. The apneatic episodes may range from 5 episodes per hour to several hundred episodes per night. Increased daytime sleepiness which is somnolence, pulmonary hypertension can be there. The patient may experience headaches, polysthemia can be there, this is abnormally increased number of RBCs in the blood, this happens to combat the problem of hypoxia. Insomnia can be there, uh, systemic hypertension and irritability. The diagnosis of obstructive sleep apnea is based on the history where we note the signs and symptoms of the patient and other things. The definitive test for obstructive sleep apnea is the polysomnographic finding or the sleep study. In this, a patient is connected to a number of devices which uh, monitor the patient's uh, stage of sleep, the muscular effort of breathing, the breathing pattern and other things. The patient is connected to electroencephalogram to monitor the brain activity, ECG to monitor the cardiac activity, electrooculogram to monitor the eye moments, electromyogram to monitor the uh, leg moments, chin electromyogram, thermal sensor and nasal pressure transducer which monitor the breathing at nose, inductance polythysmography to evaluate the pulmonary ventilation by measuring the moments of uh, chest and abdominal wall and oximetry to measure the level of uh, oxygen in the blood. The characteristic findings consistent with the obstructive sleep apnea include apneatic episodes occurring in presence of muscular effort, clinically significant apneatic episodes lasting 10 seconds or more and apneatic episodes most prevalent in the rapid eye movement stage of sleep. When we get these findings, we can conclude that the patient is having obstructive sleep apnea. The medical management includes weight loss because with the weight loss, the pharyngeal mass gets decreased and there are decreased chances of uh, obstruction, avoidance of alcohol, positional therapy in which the patient wears such devices which do not allow the patient to sleep on, it, on his back. Oral appliances like uh, mandibular advancement devices, these uh, devices uh, advance the mandible slightly forward to increase the pharyngeal lumen. Supplemental oxygen if the patient is having decreased levels of oxygen in the blood. Continuous positive airway pressure and uh, bi-level positive airway pressure can be used. These devices use mild uh, positive air pressure to keep the airways open. The medications include uh, modafinil which reduces the daytime sleepiness, protriptyline increase the respiratory drive and improves the upper airway muscle tone. 
Metroxy progesterone acetate acetazolamide are used for sleep apnea associated with chronic alveolar hypoventilation. The surgical management includes simple tonsillectomy. If the patient is having hypertrophy tonsils, we can simply remove the tonsils, which increase the airway lumen and uh, can reduce the chance of collapsibility of the airways. Uvulo palatopharyngeoplasty. This surgery uh, consists of tissue rearrangement at the uvula, soft palate, and throat walls in order to increase the airway size and decrease tissue collapse. Maxillomandibular surgery in which the maxilla or the mandible is surgically advanced forward to increase the pharyngeal lumen. Nursing management. If the patient is using devices like CPAP or BiPAP, the nurse has to uh, instruct the patient and family about the correct use of these devices. If the patient is using positional therapy devices or oral appliances, teach the patient correct use of these devices. Relate the signs and symptoms to the disorder like if the patient is having somnolence that is extra daytime sleepiness and headaches, tell the patient that these signs and symptoms are due to frequent waking up during night. In case of surgery, provide post-operative care. If the patient has undergone tonsillectomy, provide prone position with the head turned to one side so that any blood or fluid does not get aspirated and uh, comes out through the mouth. Finally, provide the uh, patient the information about the disease condition and the treatment regimen. Thank you. That was all about obstructive sleep apnea. For best anatomy and physiology videos, check the link in description.